Awesome. Welcome, friends. I can see people joining. I'm so excited to be here today. We are going to talk about all things sweet for this fun holiday season. Um, my name is Megan Faulkner Brown, and I am a celebrationist, which means I believe life is meant to be celebrated in small ways and sometimes in big ways and in all the ways you incorporate treats. <laughs> so that's why we are here today. We are going to be talking about the season of sweetness, um, just some tips and tricks with um, our Sweet Tooth Fairy Meltables, which are an incredible product that you can find at your Michael store, um, helping us in our celebration of the Christmas season. So um, let's just get started. Our class today probably won't be super duper long. If you've, if you've been on some of our other classes, they have run over. <laughs> We've been doing lots of different things, but this one is probably gonna be pretty concise. Um, but I just wanted to give you some ideas, instill some confidence with you as we go into this season, which is rich with baking and tradition and gifting, um, just to help you along the way. So, okay. Let's talk about meltables. So um, I'm going to just grab a few of these meltables. Again, these are available in your local Michael store. And what meltables are, are a sweet confectionery coating. You can see they're kind of like these little wafers. Um, and what they are, they're a chocolate-like product where the cocoa butter has been replaced with like a different um, a different fat, usually an oil. So what that means is you don't have to be some fancy chocolatier to be able to use these. You don't have to temper them. Um, you just can melt them in the microwave or in a double boiler and they act like tempered chocolate in many ways, um, but they're super easy to use. They're delicious and they really, really, they, there's so much you can do with them. They're very versatile. So we have so many different colors available at Michael's. Um, we have flavored ones, which I'll show you here in a little project towards the end. Like these are peppermint flavored. Um, we have salted caramel. There's, they're so delicious. They're so fun. They're so easy to use. I'm going to show you how easy here in just a moment. Um, okay, so again, they're just little wafers of chocolate. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can melt them. Um, what we've done is we've kind of created a faux double boiler because we're not in the kitchen. We are in a, um, in a studio here. But what you can do is you can just get a microwave or like a glass, a glass bowl, plastic bowl, anything that's not gonna melt. And you just put about an inch of water or so in a pan. Um, and in, if you were doing this over actual fire <laughs> or you know heat on your oven, you would wanna make sure that you had like a glass bowl. But all you would do is you just put, you know, again, about an inch of water into a pot and you heat it up um, and you would want to put it, um, you know, on a, on medium ish. You don't want it to like necessarily boil because all it's going to do is just heat the bottom of the bowl, which then in turn is going to heat the meltables. And then you can turn it and leave it down on simmer while you're doing all these fun treats so that it stays melted. So your chocolate stays melted. So that's one way that you can, melt these, um, the meltables. It's, it's really great. Um, and I'm going to also do some here in the microwave just to show you how simple that is as well. Um, so I'm going to grab one of these and just talk to you a little bit about how easy it is <laughs> to make a darling platter of treats. This is like cookie platter, hyped up on Christmas steroids for everyone to enjoy. So what we've done here is we've just pulled together some really cute little gingerbread men cookies. 
we actually have a um, a sweet tooth fairy gingerbread cookie mix that you can also grab at your local Michael's store. Super good, super easy to, to make. Um, just follow the directions on the back. Similarly, we have these darling um, red gingerbread men. And same thing, we have a red sugar cookie mix that you can get at your local store. And so easy to follow the directions and cut them out whip out your little gingerbread men or some trees. Um, so I'm just gonna show you really honestly how, how simple it is to take just a simple cookie and kind of make it a little over the top and a little extra, which is never a bad thing in my opinion. Um, once you've made your gingerbread men cookies or, you know, honestly, whatever, whatever Christmas holiday shapes that you have you can use the cookie mix with bake them make sure that they're cooled um all you are going to do is in your you know your the meltables when they melt are kind of like this liquid state so see how it's nice and runny um just give it a good stir and with my spoon just depending upon like how high up you want to go, you can, you can go, I mean, you could dip the whole cookie in the chocolate. You could go up. I'm kind of going a little more than halfway. And then you kind of just bang the cookie on the side to, to let any of the excess meltables drip off. Then I kind of just give it like a little scrape and then just set it down on some parchment paper so that when it's done drying, it'll easily release. This one, I'm just gonna do like one half on the other side going kind of like vertically, <laughs> I guess. We have a question. So, the meltables yeah. work for, um, do the meltables work for dipped pretzels? Oh, absolutely. Honestly, they work for anything. Anything you want to dip. <laughs> it's so great. So, um, so here we have just a couple of our cookies. You can see on this platter, we also had some, we just took some jumbo um, marshmallows and we melted some of the other colors and um, those jumbo marshmallows or you know I guess those are kind of standard size um, you just pick up from your local grocery store these little sticks you can find at Michael's which is super convenient and all you all we did was just jam the stick into the marshmallow and same thing right like you can I, I can submerge it kind of all the way into the melted meltables i always feel redundant saying melted meltables but <laughs> it is what it is and then same thing you just kind of tap the stick on the side of the bowl just to kind of get any excess um, any excess off. So here's a completely covered marshmallow on a stick. I've got some crushed peppermint. I can just sprinkle some on like this while it's still um, hasn't set up yet. And then I'll just gonna set it down on the parchment paper and just let it set up. The, the awesome thing about these meltables is that you, you definitely can put them like right into the fridge and they will set up hard, like set up quickly, you know, within probably five to 10 minutes um, for sure. But the other thing is if you are just at room temperature, like around, 70, 72 degrees, and you just let them out, they'll still set up. They would need to dry for significantly longer. Um, but 
if you don't feel like taking lots of trips to the fridge or whatever it is, or you don't have room, like I don't, because I still have Thanksgiving left leftovers in my fridge, um, then you can just let them sit out and you'll see that they'll start to, to, to set up. And what's so delicious about these multiples is when they do set up, they kind of go back to that original um, form, like the, the wafer is. And you get just this really nice kind of snap to them. And um, it's, it's so good. It's really great. So it'll set up. It'll kind of dry with a shiny sheen to it, which is beautiful. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you another way that you can melt the meltables. And it's super simple. All this is is this is a disposable pastry bag. And what, I'm, what I did is just filled some inside of the disposable pastry bag. I'm gonna pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And um, you'll see it'll have started to, to melt by then a little bit. Oh boy, here we go again with the, <laughs> with the microwave that I should be familiar enough with, but you know, it's, it's not my microwave at home, so. Sometimes I forget how it works. Also, it's Monday. So <laughs> um, anyway, so again, it's super simple. You just throw whatever color, whatever flavor you want into a disposable pastry bag, pop it in the oven. You'll see, I'll kind of give it like a nice little massage. I might need to put it back in just depending upon how melted they are. Um, but that's how you achieve some of, that's how you achieve kind of this, this drizzle look. Um, here's a little sh sugar cookie gingerbread man that we did that we drizzled some of the green meltables with. Okay, so that was actually in for about 45 seconds and you can see it is like completely, completely melted. So, so that's great. We have some, oh, scissors, here we go, perfect. Okay, so then all I'm gonna do is just cut the tip of the disposable pastry bag. And this is totally your preference. Like if you wanted a really thick, heavy drizzle on any of these treats, then you would cut the tip back, you know, further. But if you want it to be kind of finer and more precise, then you would cut it a little bit closer to the actual tip. So I'm gonna start out with a finer drizzle, just so you can see the difference. And honestly, this is probably about like an eighth of an inch that I, that I barely just trimmed off. Um, and if I drizzle that, can you, is that a good, okay. Let's move our, so all I'm gonna do is just kind of go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth over the top of the gingerbread men. You'll see it's gonna be a little bit finer of a drizzle, kind of more delicate. So, so those are some really fine, fine lines. Um, but with this other guy, I'm gonna cut it a little bit bigger. And you can just see, it's just a different, you know, different look, oops. Where it's significantly thicker. Now, if you were, if you wanted to add, here's some crushed toffee that we have, again, available at Michael's. Um, I would recommend doing like a thicker drizzle just so that these chunks that are a little bit bigger would like adhere to your cookie or your pretzel. Oops, that one fell off. Or whatever it is that you are drizzling with the meltables. Um, the kind of thinner, the thinner drizzle I would think would be better for if you were doing sprinkles or anything that's like finely crushed. Like if you were gonna do you know, crushed sandwich, uh, sandwich cookies or like graham crackers. Um, but again, that's just my personal preference. You honestly, there's, there's no right or wrong way on um, to like drizzle your cookies. <laughs> so 
But I just wanted to show you kind of in comparison that you are totally in control of how it looks and how thick you want the drizzle to, to look. The other thing you could do is, let's say you didn't, um, like you didn't want to dip the cookie in the chocolate, or let's say you had like some leftover meltables that were already in a pastry bag that you had put in there after you were done last time you were using them. You just pop it in the microwave, they'll melt again. And then you can, you know, you can just use the meltables to kind of pipe on top of the cookie. Oops. I mean, this would be super yum if you love this vanilla flavor is really good. It kind of just tastes like vanilla, <laughs> a creamy, yummy vanilla. If your meltables start to harden up when you're using them, uh, how long do you recommend putting them back in the microwave? So I would start, so if, so for example, like you can see this has kind of already started to set up. It's still soft and pliable, but definitely I couldn't dip anything in there. So at this point, I would recommend putting them in for about 15 seconds, just because they're not quite back to the completely set up stage. They're still kind of soft and that will kind of help avoid over melting them, which happens. Um, and what that does is it kind of causes the chocolate to like seize up. And if you've worked with candy melts before, candy wafers, you know, almond bark, whatever, they're kind of all the same thing. But it's, I mean, it's happened to me lots of times where you're like, ah, I left it in for too long. I didn't stir it. And it'll kind of get burnt. Um, and what I do when that happens is you can actually just kind of like excavate the burnt part. Um, it'll kind of get like crystallized and it'll, it'll change color. But you can just remove that from the chocolate and, um, and then just add like a little bit of um, a vegetable oil. Like I would start, honestly, depending upon how much you have, I would start with like a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon and you add that back in, you add that oil, that fat back into um, to the meltables and it should go back to its nice, smooth kind of liquid state. So I hope that's helpful. Um, <coughs> I'm gonna throw that guy back in there for, for a minute. And let's see, that actually is going back in for 14 seconds. So we can see how melted it is. Um, and hopefully that will help answer. Okay, yeah, so it still needs some stirring, but it's definitely didn't need the full 30 seconds um, that I would like originally start with. I originally start with 30 second intervals when I'm using the meltables, just because again, I like to make sure that I don't, um, that I don't over, I don't nuke them too hard. <laughs> so another way that you can drizzle, if you don't have piping bags, totally fine. You can, you could use just like a plastic, you know, like a Ziploc bag or whatever, or you can just take a spoon like this to go like that you're not going to have as much of uh i would say like as much control necessarily as you would want if you used a piping bag but that's fine so i'm just going to add a little bit more peppermint chunks because peppermint is so good so yeah, so as you can see, again, so simple, such a simple way to dress up. I mean, I guess from that shot, it just looks like a sad uh, baking mishap, but I'll put it onto some clear white parchment paper and you can kind of see that really with just a few, you know, with, with even just one meltable product, you can really do a few fun different things. Um, we also had, like if you're 
crispy rice treat fans. We have some of those here as well. And um, these are also fun, I think, to make into like pops, essentially. So those ones have, let's see, these have been sitting for a minute. And by minute, I mean like lots of days. <laughs> are there extra? Oh, these guys, yeah, here we go. So one fun thing to do with these, these treats is just can jam one of these sticks in there. Kind of want to make sure that it's, I wouldn't poke it all the way through, but about two thirds of the way up. And then let's grab, let's see. Can just similarly with these other ones, just, you know, if you want to submerge the whole thing into the meltables, like that sounds delicious. If you want to just kind of go up, I kind of with 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 uh, with these, I kind of like to expose a little bit of the cereal just because I think then people automatically know what they are. Um, and how fun like I have. So I have six kids and they all a they rage in ages from 14 to three. And bless their hearts, they've literally been raised in bakeries. <laughs> I opened a bakery lots and lots of years ago here locally, and we have several of them throughout the region, but they are just used to playing in the kitchen. Like, it's just part of, part of what they do. It's part of, like, if they have downtime, if they have friends over, it's like, hey, let's bake. Hey, what can we make? Can we do, you know, crispy rice treats? Can we make cookies? What can we do? So this is something that is such an easy treat to make, right? It's just crispy rice cereal, marshmallows, some butter or margarine, put the kids on that part of it, make, give them some confidence in the kitchen as well. And, um, and then after it's set up, you know, then you can get your meltables out and have just like this little bar of things that they can add to them and just let them kind of go to town. And it's so, so fun. My mom actually just moved up here and she's watching with my little three-year-old. Hi, mama. Hi, Dunk. And um, like today, after the kids get home from school, you know, grandma and the kiddos are going to do this actually at home, making cookies, playing with the meltables. And it's, it's just something that's so fun that just is very, for me, just like celebrating the holiday season with treats in the kitchen is just so fun. The other thing that's awesome about, about this kind of stuff is you can quickly do a variety of lots of different things. And if you're not necessarily like, maybe you're not super comfortable with like actual the baking process <clears throat> that's okay right because a lot of this stuff you can actually just like buy off of the shelf you can go to a grocery store and get you know let's say you have a favorite cookie or cracker or you know donut or whatever it is um, you can just buy that stuff and then you add your personal touch with the meltables with sprinkles with some fun different inclusions like these. And it really just makes it feel like super personal and just very thoughtful. Um, so we love doing neighbor gifts in our family. And, um, you know, we have, we have family that lives close to us, just a few cities away. And so it's really fun for us to kind of make all of these treats and put them on a fun little plate and, you know, go ding dong ditch them on people's door. So, so fun. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of call out that you can also get at Michael's is we have this really fun, um, this baking chip mix. I don't have the packaging right now because we've been obsessed over them and have been <laughs> using them all, but they're so cute. They're just red and white, um, like chocolate chips and any of your favorite recipe that you have, just toss them in. I mean, even if it's a sugar cookie recipe or if it's chocolate chip, you can 
you know, remove your traditional chocolate chips and put these instead, or you can just add these to your chocolate chips that you already put in. Um, this is just a really yum, like double fudge kind of cookie recipe. You just toss them in and it's just so festive and so fun. So <clears throat> that's kind of the gist of the first part of what I wanted to show you, just how simple and easy you can create a really fun, um, you know, over the top cookie platter or treat platter. Um, a few times back, we did like a, like a charcuterie. We called it like a sucre tree <laughs> because we weren't doing meats and cheeses. We were doing everything sweet with sugar um, and didn't feel right to call it a charcuterie because <laughs> there was no, you know, no uh, cooked meat on the platter, if you will. So anyway, um, but if you go on onto Michael's um, YouTube, you can reference some of those. We go over some other tips and tricks on there that hopefully you will find helpful um, during this holiday season. And what I wanted to just go into next was just like an out of the box um, idea that's kind of building on the, the hot cocoa bombs. I don't know if you guys have seen that trend all over, <laughs> but it's kind of all over the internet. And I just had a thought, you know, several days ago that I was like, we're going to give this a try and to see how it goes. So I'm going to kind of move some of this stuff off and then we'll move into that. And if there's any questions at right now, I'm happy to answer them says I'm kind of cleaning up this yes. portion. Um, we had a question if you can add flavoring to the multiples. So um, you can add flavoring. You'll want to make sure that it's an oil based flavoring because um, you don't want, thank you. Um, you don't want to add, you don't want to add water, anything like water-based to, heavily water-based to your meltables because that will actually have it seize up as well. So if it's an oil-based flavoring, then yes, you can definitely add it. The other thing is we do have a bunch of different flavors that are available at Michael's. So like I was saying, we have like a salted caramel and a peanut butter and peppermint and um, like a red velvet one coming soon. And so anyway, so I would just say you could also just look for some of those flavors that are available. But again, totally feel free to add, you know, some flavoring to them. And um, if you guys find out any ones that like you think work the best or if you've, you know, just share it, share it with us. It's always fun to learn new things about what other people are doing with, with the product. So, so fun. Um, is there anything else? There was uh, one more question. If you can freeze your treats with meltables on them. Yes. Yeah, you definitely can. So one thing that you'll want to do though, when as long, um, let me back up. So when, if you want to make them ahead of time and freeze them, or if you have a bunch of leftovers and you want to freeze them and kind of ration them throughout, you know, the weeks to come, you just want to make sure that you put your treats in an airtight container or a bag. Um, and it doesn't need to be anything super fancy, but you just want to make it airtight. Um, and then when you, let's say you want to take them out and serve them. What you want to do is you want to keep them in the container that they've been frozen in until it kind of comes to room temperature so that you avoid any condensation that might happen, whether, I don't know, you know, if it's super humid where you live or super dry or super hot or super cold, um, or maybe you like keep your house super hot, you know, but just letting it kind of come to room temperature in the airtight container will lessen the likelihood of any condensation happening, which means it just like the chocolate looks wet and it doesn't like set up as, um, as hard as it would otherwise. So hopefully that makes sense and is, and is helpful. Yes, and we had one more question come through. Uh, if you yes. can add dye to the white multiples. Yes, same thing. You'll want to make sure it's an oil-based dye because, um, again, that just helps um, preserve the, like, 
the you know integrity of the meltable in the sense that if you added anything that was like super water based then it would it would likely have the meltables cause it to like seize up um, and then you kind of are reverse engineering it like adding back in the oil or you know so um but yeah you can try colors for sure one thing that's fun though i will say to that point is with the white like it's so fun to kind of tap tap into your like grade school art class and you can get these different multiple colors or you know just use let's say you have you know red yellow and blue you can just mix and match your own colors so right you can make purple if you have red and blue and you can make you know that sort of those uh, art principles still apply here when working with um with the meltables but what i was going to say was with the white i actually am very like fond of kind of lighter pastel colors just like in everything in my life i kind of like kind of like softer hues and what i love about the white is you just add a little bit more white to let's say you had red appeals or let's say you you know took out some white um, excuse me, some white wafers of the meltables and put them in a bowl. And we're adding, you know, your food coloring to that, but you're like, ah, it's too dark. You know, then you can just take some more of the meltables, like a few more of the little wafers, plop them in, and then it will lighten it up. Um, it was fun kind of when we were initially doing the meltables, we didn't quite have like so many colors to offer, but it was fun for me to be like, ooh, I'm gonna use this yellow and I'm gonna mix it with this red and a little bit of white to get like a really light, peachy, fun orange color. Um, so it, honestly, just get creative. There's there's like endless possibilities <laughs> with with them. Um, it's, they're so fun. They're just like so fun to play with. So does that answer your question in a very long roundabout way, <laughs> I hope? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so kind of thinking a little bit outside of the box here, but I'm going to show you something super fun. Um, so I was on Cupcake Wars um, a handful of times, and I kind of just have like cupcakes are just kind of in the inner parts of my soul. <laughs> so what I thought I would do is take some um, cupcake liners and see if I could essentially create like, like a modified hot cocoa bomb. Um, my grandparents actually spent several years living in England and one of the traditions that they brought back with them when they moved back here were um, like, like Christmas poppers or crackers. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those on the shelves anywhere, but they're pretty much just like little um, tubes that kids can like pull the ends off of and there's stuff inside and it's, you know, sometimes it's confetti or candy or toys or whatever. So that kind of idea married with like my love of cupcakes just, you know, kind of came together and I thought, let's just give this a go and see if we can make like cupcake kind of hot cocoa poppers. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna, that's what I'm gonna show you to do. So one thing to note is the liners that I am gonna show you that I am using are actually ones, um, they're grease resistant cupcake liners. And this was something that was so fun for me to develop with American Crafts. What that means is um, they're not just straight up paper liners. See how it has a little bit of like a sheen inside? They're sturdy, they're super sturdy. So like if I take one out, it's not like your typical thin paper liner. It's, in my opinion, it's quite a bit thicker and it has this grease resistant lining inside so that if you were doing like just, you know, regular cupcakes, the integrity of the design of the liner will stay. Like if I put chocolate batter in here, you, it's not gonna seep through and you're not gonna lose the design, um, which was something that again is like a cupcake aficionado. <laughs> I was always so confused, like, oh, there's so many cute liners, but then when I actually use them, you can't see the cute designs anymore. So anyway, my point in telling you this is that 
you, if you don't have access to grease resistant liners, then you can use silicone cupcake, um, cupcake liners, which I'm sure you've seen around, or you could use regular paper liners, but you'd want to hit it with some, um, like some nonstick cooking spray or, um, and, and then also in addition to that, you'd want to like double or, or triple up for what I'm about to show you because the paper liners are super thin and it doesn't really hold the weight of the meltables that I'm going to put in as well. Um, so should make sense when I start, but okay. So all I'm going to do is take my melted chocolate, my melted meltables, <laughs> and I'm going to plop some in. This is probably, I don't know, about a tablespoon or so. I'm going to do probably about two-ish tablespoons, maybe one and a half-ish. Anyway, again, there's no like perfect mass to this. But what I'm going to do is coat the inside of this cupcake liner with the melted meltables. And it's actually kind of advantageous at this point that you can kind of see the chocolate is has set up a little bit, which is fine. Um, because if it is, if it is a little like if, if it's just fresh out of the microwave or it's fresh off of the double boiler, then it's going to, um, it's going to kind of run down a little bit on the sides of the, oops, on the sides of the cupcake liner. And you'll just kind of have to wait for it then to kind of get a little bit thicker so that it will set up along the sides. So you see how I'm kind of like essentially just like painting. I'm going to do one more and I'm going to show you what I mean. See how the chocolate is like pretty thick right now. I'm going to put it in the microwave for about 15 seconds. And oh. no. <laughs> oh. the other way you can do it is I just have like this pastry brush. Um, this one's actually like a silicone one. And you can kind of similarly you use this to like brush, you know, the chocolates up into the liner. So, okay, that was about just a little less than, I guess, a little more than 15 seconds. Okay, so see how it's nice and melted. So I'm going to take another liner. And just going to add a couple of these spoonfuls in. Maybe another one. I'm just going to kind of push the chocolate around. Now, if you've seen the hot cocoa bombs, um, you know, online and Pinterest and whatnot, they're so fun. And traditionally they're made with like um, spheres, like silicone molds that are like hemispheres. And then you do this process, but you do it in the mold and then you essentially glue them together with some of the meltables, which is so fun because then it's like literally just like this brown bomb of, um, or this, you know, this round circle of chocolate that you then put some of the hot cocoa powder and other things inside. Okay, so can you see that? Okay. So I kind of just kind of twirl. And if I were doing like several of these, like one after the other after the other, what I would probably do is get like a cookie sheet with parchment, parchment paper and just line them up after I'm done with them, but I would put them face down. And the reason I would do that is because some of the chocolate is going to, which way am I going? There we go. Um, some of the chocolate is gonna kind of gather naturally at the bottom of the liner, right? Which is totally fine. But if you 
if you do this and you let it set up, some of it's going to see how it's drizzling out like that. It's just naturally going to kind of with gravity, just kind of seep down, kind of giving it a little bit more of like an even coat. So um, April, if you don't mind, I'm going to send this off these two off to the fridge and then I'll show you after they set up kind of what we're working with. One thing, well, I'll talk about it when they come out of the oven, or oven, not the oven, the fridge. Thank you so much. So what I've done is I had actually made some of these ahead of time. Okay, so this is like, it might look like a silicone cupcake baking, you know, liner, but it's actually just the red meltables. So this would be so fun. Like I was actually chatting with my mom this morning about it and she's like, oh, those would be a fun just dessert cup. Like if you put some chocolate mousse in it, you could put ice cream in it. Like how fun to just serve, just use it just like that, you know? But what I'm going to do is show you um, just a little bit like the, the hot cocoa trend. And let's see, actually I'll use this white one. Thank you. So this white one has um, set up already. So I'm gonna pop it into the microwave while I'm doing um, this guy. So, so what you can do is just take, so let me, let me rewind. My kids love marshmallows, <laughs> like have an unhealthy obsession with marshmallows. And um, so with these hot cocoa bombs, the theory behind them is you create essentially the flavoring for your hot cocoa. So what you do is you heat up some milk and you pour your milk, you know, into a mug. And then this bomb that you create is what provides all the flavor. So what you pack inside of it is hot cocoa powder, you know, marshmallows, peppermint chunks, sprinkles. Like if you love Nutella, you could put Nutella inside. If you loved, you know, caramel, you could put some caramel in there. So how you get your like hot chocolate is from putting this inside of the hot milk. So what I'm gonna do is just take some of these marshmallows. First, I'm gonna do the hot cocoa. And that's because, um, for a couple of reasons that I'll explain here in a sec, but. Um, so I just do like, that's probably about a tablespoon and a half of actual hot cocoa powder. And then I'm just filling it with some, these are mini dehydrated marshmallows. I just, they are so, they're so good. I love the texture on them. They're so delicious. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of the peppermint chunks inside as well. So you can see, um, I'm not filling it necessarily all the way. I'm just filling it about two thirds of the way. You could, if you wanted to, just pile as much fun, you know, candy or marshmallows or whatever you want inside. Like that's totally fine. Um, and then I'm just gonna take the meltables and pour it on top so that it covers the top of the stuff that you just put inside. And I'll do another one with chocolate. So let's do, let's see, look at these fun ones. These are like, these are so fun. I'm gonna do another probably tablespoon and a half of the cocoa powder. I'm gonna put in these fun like cereal marshmallows. And then I'm gonna take the chocolate, put it inside. 
again, mind you, this would be so fun just to use for like scoops of ice cream or with like a chocolate mousse. Um, you know, if you had like a no bake cheesecake, you could put those inside of here as well. Um, so, okay, April, do you mind running these to the fridge for me? That would be awesome. Thank you. Um, and then in just a couple minutes, I'll show you just kind of how we top it off. But basically, I'll um, just pop in some milk into the microwave. And um, I'll just start, start it out at like a minute. But I just think it would be so fun. I, I kind of go back to like my kids and the holidays. <laughs> just like it would be so fun to have you know, just like a bar set up for them to make their own, um, to make, well, any of this stuff, but specifically with the hot chocolate, like to, for us, hot chocolate is pretty seasonal. Like we don't have it any time other than like now during the fall and winter. And so they get very excited about all things hot chocolate. Um, so I just think it'd be so fun to have just a little activity with them where it's like, okay, you can make these ahead of time and get them all set up, all lined out, and then just let them um, do it themselves. Like you can say, oh, look, you can pick from, you know, maybe you have a few different flavors of hot cocoa that you've bought um, and just different candies and toppings and different flavored marshmallows or what have you, and let them do that themselves. And Again, it just kind of instills confidence in them in the kitchen, but then lets them be creative and it's pretty fun. So I'm gonna let that, put that in for just a little bit longer. Um, are there any questions at this point? Yes, uh, can you use regular marshmallows or do they have to be the dehydrated ones? Oh, no, totally, you can totally. In fact, I have some right here. I should have put them in. I'm just partial <laughs> to the dehydrated ones because I love that like crunchy texture of them. Um, but yeah, for sure, you can use mini ones, absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing, again, like we have different flavored meltables. So like this is the, um, this is the peppermint meltables. Like it looks like an actual cupcake liner, but this is just the meltables that we've done this technique with. So this is already going to be like a peppermint flavored, um, you know, cupcake, cocoa cracker, cupcake, cocoa cracker. Maybe that's what we should call them. Um, and similarly, like we have a, you know, pumpkin spice or a salted caramel. So you can use some of the meltables to achieve the flavor that you're going for or not. You can just, you know, pick like the white, meltables and then you just have add some of the different flavors that you would want in terms of like peppermint or again like if you maybe you love nutella or maybe like peanut butter even in there like i don't know you can just get creative and and figure figure it out as as you go so that's pretty fun <laughs> pretty fun pretty yummy and uh, my kids, you know, we're going to, we're going to do this. Grandma's going to do some of the baking stuff, but we're going to do some of the hot cocoa stuff when, when I get back later today. So uh, where can you buy the hydrated marshmallows? April, do you mind grabbing? Um, so honestly, you can find them just at like your grocery store. They come in, um, I think they're called like Molo bits is but they just come in like a little packet um by uh, like in my mind's eye i could see i actually don't think it's by like i think it's by like the hot chocolate and stuff i don't think it's by like the in the baking section where you would have your inclusions and you'd have like actual marshmallows um but yeah you should just be able to check your local local grocery store um but maybe someday we'll do Sweet Tooth Fairy ones <laughs> and they'll be at Michael's. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, thank you. 
Perfect. Do you think Thank that you. these cocoa bombs can be sent through the mail? Um, I do think, oh, they haven't set up quite that much. Do you mind that white one hasn't set up? Do you mind taking that one back? That'd be awesome. So yes, I do. I would, so um, they, they're, they're delicate, right? Because they're chocolate. And, but I think if you just were very particular about how you wrapped them, like with some bubble wrap or with some of the um, like air, you know, like the air pockets, <laughs> I don't know what else to call them that you can package with. I definitely think you could. The other thing, if you were to do these actual cupcake ones, you could just leave them in their liners um, and that would just provide a little bit more like structural integrity for the, the chocolate part of it. Um, so, but I for sure think you can. I have personally haven't tried it yet, but I, I believe that you for sure could. So I'll just show you here with, so this is the chocolate one that had set up. And my thought was like, oh, it'd be so fun to just take some like whipped topping. And so let's see, we'll pour our milk. Again, about two thirds of the way up. Take some, I just am doing like store-bought, but I think if you did like homemade whipped cream that it would set up a little bit longer, you know? Like how cute is that? <laughs> it is so fun. Anyway, and then let's see. You can kind of just plop it in. It's a little lopsided, but, and I may have not heated my, <laughs> my milk hot enough but if you just let it set eventually it's going to melt the chocolate and all of the contents of what you put inside is going to then get into the um into the milk so you can even just like give it a good stir oh yeah so you can see see how even just on the bottom it started to like pop open and then just can give it a good stir. Oh, this one had the, I had forgotten this one had the like cereal marshmallows in it. So fun. So just fun yummy right so there you go <laughs> just all that hard work and then it just disintegrates into your milk <laughs> but it's gonna taste real good so so there's that one so I hope that kind of like kind of makes sense it's definitely like the I think the fun part of it is in the process of making it and then with the kids, just seeing it as it begins to melt in the milk, the chocolate, you know, the 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 meltables begins to melt and melt in the hot milk, and then all that stuff just kind of starts to like kind of bubble and come up to the come up to the surface. So that's a fun little thing. Just a little different than your the spheres. And I, you know, I kind of thought, well, maybe people don't have have the silicone sphere molds at home, but they might have um, silicone baking liners or they might have just regular paper ones that again, you can, if you just hit it with a little bit of um, nonstick cooking spray and then kind of double up on the, um, the liners just so it's a little bit stronger, then you could, you could do that. And this, so I'll just show you, this is one of the ones that had set up in the fridge. And um, one thing to, one thing just to think about, and this is true when you're using like the spheres or any kind of molds, what's so great about the meltables is they're kind of like, they have lots of magical powers. <laughs> but if, if, for example, if you chip aside, um, if there's a chip in the chocolate, or if you're doing the spheres, like with the, the actual cocoa bombs and part of it like breaks off, 
you can just essentially put it right back in the mold and melt some of the chocolate and just kind of use the chocolate to glue it back together. And then you put it in the fridge, let it set up, and then it just is, is ready um, after it's set up. So all I'm going to do, oh, I didn't mean to double line this one, but I did apparently. <laughs> well then. So all I'm going to do is just find a oops, part of the liner that isn't, can you see okay? Okay. I was just trying to find part of the liner that was a little bit like um, exposed on the outside. I don't know how any other way how to describe it, but like I've just was just kind of put my fingernail in between the liner and the chocolate. So there you go. You have like your little your little cup, <laughs> your little mousse cup, your little hot your little cupcake cracker cocoa cupcake cocoa cracker <laughs> so i don't know i'm trying to just blend all the memories into one little thing so so there you have it kind of out of the box but hey it's what we're here for to get creative and to have fun and just to use your imagination and come up with lots of fun different yummy things so if there if there aren't any other questions i don't know if you have any any other um, questions? I'm happy to answer. Yes, they were wondering the recipe that you used on the inside, was it plain cocoa powder or a mix? Oh, the, oh, you mean, um, this is just hot. This is like hot chocolate powder. Yeah, right. this is just hot chocolate powder. But I will say like the, the meltables themselves provide like a lot of sweetness. So you could use just regular cocoa powder because you're going to get a lot of like the sugary sweetness from the meltables. And if you add any candy or if you add marshmallows, you're going to get that sweetness as well. Um, so you could, you could use just regular cocoa powder. And the other thing is like when you're doing, if you choose to use just one of the the chocolate meltables, you're going to get a lot of just chocolate flavor just straight from the meltables melting in the milk. So you don't really have to use a ton of cocoa powder or even um, like hot chocolate mix um, because you have the flavoring coming from the meltables themselves. So, so yeah. We have one last question. Uh, where, do hey. you have, uh, where do you have your bakery? Oh, so I'm here in Utah, just outside of Salt Lake, and we have them kind of dotting the state as far south as St. George and as far north as Layton. There's kind of all in between. So, um, so yeah, that's fun. It's a very busy time, but it's the most wonderful time of the year, right? <laughs> so I'm so happy that I got to be here with you guys today. Um, Next month, we have we have a couple classes coming up next month for Valentine's Day. So stay tuned and um, we'll see you then. Thank you so much for being here. I know everyone's busy and I appreciate you spending time with me today. So have a great day. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy holiday. And we'll see you next month.